I'm gonna wait for a few more people to get here before we start. Let's see what we've got going on. We have some red Azuki beans. Chef Kitchen, where every Sunday at 6 o'clock we do a new vegan recipe. And tonight, not totally sure what we're gonna do, but I did prep some Azuki beans, which I don't, I don't think I've cooked these before. And Hi, Lauren and Charlie. <laughs> I started soaking these the night before. No, that's not true. I started soaking them at 10 this morning. Oh, it's six now, so I've, they've been soaking for about eight hours. I just rinsed them out a little bit. And I am going to put them into a pot and boil them while I do everything else. Hi, Brock. <laughs> hey guys, hey everyone. in my hand. I'm not sure where I got this from. <laughs> um, actually, I do know where that came from. That came from eating banana surprise, which I did the other night. I'll show you guys that later. So I'm just, again, there's Azuki beans in here. I'll show you what those look like. They were dry. And I am, I, I soaked them for about eight hours and rinsed them a few times in the bowl with some water and now I just do them in a pot to boil. I have not cooked these before. I don't know how long they're going to take. My guess is around 30 minutes or so, like other dried beans. These are them. In case you're wondering what I'm saying, Azuki, the little red beans. What else are we gonna have tonight? We've got some kale that's been prepared. All right, so we've got red Azuki beans, some red kale. I love how purple it is. It's a really cool color. I don't know. The lighting's always weird in here. But got that. So we've got our protein. We've got our vegetable. I'm probably gonna use some onion. What else should go with this? Red onion, why not? I think white onion, I'm gonna cook it. What should we have as the carb? You think we should do pasta or rice or mm, potato? Anyone have any suggestions? We did potato last week. We could do that again. And what do you think? What do you think, film girl? I'm always, I'm too biased, so you shouldn't ask me. You're gonna, you don't want rice, I know that. Mm -hmm. You probably want potato. Yeah, it's, I always want potato, so you should make what you want to make. Let's, let's have potato. Well, I narrowed it down to three. Brock says rice. Brock says rice? Yeah. You think we should do rice? That's what Brock says. Are you cool with rice? Yeah. Let's do some rice. You did just make a delicious beet rice thing. Yeah. Rice is a good one because this is another one that's kind of hard to... There's very specific instructions for cooking rice a lot of the time. 
and I don't follow them. So I can show you how to do a, uh, a like a hack way to cook rice without measuring mm -hmm. anything. Um, I do have a rice cooker. Rice cookers somewhere in here. We've never used it. <laughs> I've never seen you use a rice cooker. I haven't used it in a while. <laughs> Brock, I agree. So we're gonna do some some and most people I don't know if most I think it's a lot of I think in Asia is pretty common, but I don't think in the US a lot of people have rice cookers. And this is how we're gonna do rice. So I have there's all different types of rice. There is this is white basmati rice. There is, what's this one? This is long grain rice, which is probably similar. There's short grain rice, like sushi rice. There's jasmine rice. I forget what the difference is between them all. I think it's just the size and how they're cut. Um, it might be a different plant too. I have to look that, look into that. And they all cook at different times, so you don't want to mix rices usually. Like if you have some basmati and some short grain rice, mm -hmm. you, you don't want to like mix them together and try and cook them at the same time. I've done it, it doesn't work. One is either going to come out too hard or too mushy. Mm -hmm. but, so I'm just going to add... Is that the same as lentils, Bo? Rice and lentils are different. In terms uh, of doing green and red lentils together? Oh, yeah, same thing with lentils. So red lentils cook a lot faster than green lentils. All right, so as you can see, um, I didn't do anything. I didn't measure this at all, so I just put the rest of the pot in here. And now I'm gonna rinse the rice. And you could do this in a colander. I usually just will fill the pot and drain it a couple times. The proper way that I've heard of doing this is to rinse the rice until the water runs clear. I almost never do that. Uh, <laughs> I think the point of that is so the rice is less, like, uh, so it doesn't clump together as much or, buy, or get as risotto-y. Um, risotto is like when you stir rice a lot, it almost turns into like a mushy like pudding. Uh, but if, like if you've had like really good rice from like some sort of Asian restaurant, it's usually like not stuck together at all. The grains are usually very individual. I am not worried about the grains sticking together. That doesn't bother me. So I'm not gonna worry about getting it perfectly clear. So this is the last, last bit that I'm gonna drain out here. And... There we go. So I probably have about twice as much water as there is rice in here. Again, I did not measure. We can always add more water later, or if I taste it and check it and find that the rice is pretty much ready, I can drain it. So I've always seen any recipe for rice calls for having a certain amount of water, a certain amount of rice, you put it in a pot and you cover the pot. And I don't do that. I leave the pot open. Water's gonna boil off, so it's almost pointless to measure it you, you will get some some idea but uh, I don't know what I'm saying I kind of just lost my train of thought there's our rice so <laughs> right now there's no lid there's no lid uh. <laughs> <laughs> love love speaking of love we have to take a minor detour oh our filmer oh, for gosh. Cash Chef Kitchen and oh, totally embarrass her. Yeah. Made the already. local news. <laughs> that is our our the lovely filmer. She is the love guru of PB. She's spreading love. <laughs> I have to not fold this so it doesn't get creased. These are gonna be worth something someday. If you'd like to order one with taking bids, <laughs> <laughs> the auction will close in seven days. Autographed. They'll be, yes, they'll be autographed in Sharpie, and yeah, just so everyone can see, here she is, <laughs> the love guru herself. <laughs> okay, now we have kale, we have an onion. Thank you, Brock. 
what should we do with kale and onion? Should I add anything else to it? There's a green apple. I can make a fun salsa. There's a red onion. What am I doing? What am I doing? I'm just gonna pull things. Your yellow squash. This is one of my least favorite vegetables, actually, though. I'm not a big fan of yellow squash. Mm. But we'll, we'll tackle that one day. I don't know if I'm feeling up for it right now. Oh, uh, we got jalapenos. We got, what else is in here? We've got some... Are they all too ripe now? Mm. Yeah, they're all a little mushy. We got green olives again. Mm. Those were fun last time. They were surprising and good. There's carrots and lemon and... Ooh. Oh, there's carrots, like you just said. <laughs> there's the lemon. That looks like the leaf's still on it even. I picked it. You picked it? Wow. You're a love guru, a filmer, and a farmer. Yes. She's a woman of many talents. <laughs> we got oranges. Did you pick these too? No, those were from the avocado man. Mm -hmm. Right in the alley. <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing with all this? We got kale. What do we do? What do we do? A salsa? Oh, juggle. <laughs> I wish you could see her face right now. She was genuinely surprised that I can do that, I think. Um, this is all me think, thinking about what, what to make. <laughs> this is part of the creative process that you're seeing right now. You have to play start, with your food. I'm just gonna start, we're gonna start with the onion because I like, I like some of this stuff. This is looking good. We got, we got time because we got things boiling here, so that's gonna be pretty boring the rest of the night. I'll probably do something with the beans. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm just gonna start. Red onion. I always do red onion for any like salsas. And why? I think that that is because, okay, so this isn't fair. I normally have to like look around the kitchen, but she actually did move things this time, so the knives are now here, this is new. <laughs> We're testing it out. Okay, so red onion is my favorite onion to use raw. And I think that that is because it's pretty, it's a milder onion, I think. I don't know, I you know, I, I wish I could say with more evidence <laughs> why that, I why I use raw onion, red onion raw, but it's just, I don't have a good reason. I don't know if it is really more mild. I tell myself that. I like to cut it really thin in any raw application. And then I'm gonna soak it in, it's gonna be part of this salsa with some, some vinegar or some acid, something acidic and salt. And that's gonna cut back on that bite that onions often have that make you cry. If you don't want to cry when you eat onions, uh, contact lenses help. <laughs> Get blind but first. <laughs> <laughs> so they do make some to alter the color of your eye. So maybe you can, you know, if you have brown eyes, you can be a blue eyed person for the day and then cut onions and then not cry later. <laughs> But yeah, I have contact lenses in right now, so I don't feel anything. I feel it. 
Yeah, you feel it? I'll, I'll sacrifice and have some tears for my good vision. <laughs> Thank you. As long as, as long as the video is good, right? <laughs> Yeah, it's not the worst thing in the world if you cry when cutting onions. And I'm just going to do like a super fine, not super fine, that's an exaggeration, a decently fine chop here. I do need to get a bigger cutting board though. Mm. That's something that is on my to-make to list. Yeah, it's not get, it's you need to make. Yeah. All <laughs> oh, our cutting boards are a little, a little tiny right now. And the way I'm building, so I'm gonna make a salsa. And some of my favorite salsas have fresh fruit in them. Mm. So this is gonna be a fruity, delicious salsa. Mm. And I add red onion first. So I'm doing the red onion first because like I said, it's got that onion, that harshness. And the longer it sits in the acid that we're gonna put in, which I think I'm gonna use lemon in this case. You can use any other vinegars though, and salt, that's gonna help tame the onion. Sounds like such a funny word for gonna tame this wild onion. Mm. So this is half of an onion that I just threw in here. And it's like a medium sized onion. Onion size varies. Uh, next is the lemon. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is rinse it. And that was fresh from a tree. Local and organic. Local and organic lemon. Love that. Now we can do the lemon trick. Mm. Oh, good thing our film was looking at the rice. I just turned it down to a medium low heat so it's gonna simmer. Our beans are still going. I'm gonna turn that down and keep it at a rolling boil. So rolling boil means like, like, oh, that's like boiling a lot, but it's not boiling over. And then this one's going to be simmering where it's not boiling super crazy, but it's definitely bubbly. It's definitely hot. And I'm going to keep checking back every so often. So the first thing you want to do before you cut an onion, mm. it, this is a lemon, before you cut a lemon, oh, I'm so good at speaking. It's ridiculous. This is great for me. Um... <laughs> you do this thing where you roll it out like this and you apply pressure and you roll, roll it. And the reason you do this is this puts all the juices to the outer edges so that way when you slice it, none of the juices come out. It smells good. Okay, next thing I'm gonna do is grab my little strainer. You can use your hand and your hand's gonna get all lemony and squeeze the lemon onto the onion. And I am gonna, see, a seed always manages to get in, <laughs> no matter what. This lemon is super seedy. Yeah, it is. That is just, it's loaded. I wonder if there's anything you could do with lemon seeds. So much potential. So much potential. Oh, then plant a lemon tree. Mm. Some seeds are not safe to eat. Apple seeds are actually toxic. I think they have, a very small, they have some small amount of the toxin in them. So if you eat one, you'll be fine. But if you just like, oh, I'm gonna have a bag of apple seeds for lunch today. <laughs> Probably not the best idea. Mm. There goes my lunch tomorrow. Mm, I'm sorry to disappoint you. Now I'm gonna add some salt to this too, to draw out some of the water that's in the onion. Salt, salt's gonna draw out the water in the onion. I'm just gonna add to the liquid that's in here and that's gonna help and tame that harshness. And uh, that was maybe like an eighth of a teaspoon. Sorry, my allergies are bad today.
Okay. Got our onion. What next? What next? Let's add. Got some green apple. Acid is also nice in that it helps prevent browning. So whenever you make guacamole or if you have sliced fruit that browns like an apple, you can add some lemon juice or some vinegar and that will prevent it from browning. It's really interesting like how pH, if everyone remembers pH from high school, that affects how food is cooked. Acids usually like inhibit the cooking process in in some way. Like if you add if you add um if you add vinegar to boiling potatoes, you will actually make them firmer. So if you're making a potato salad, it's good to add vinegar to your boiled potatoes because that'll keep them firm without overcooking them and turning them mushy. Baking soda does the opposite. It makes them really, it like cooks extra. So that's good if you want to make tater tots where you want like a really brown, crispy, um, crispy texture, but you don't want to overcook, overcook them. I'm just chopping up this apple into like little bite-sized pieces here. This would probably be even smaller. Okay, I'm gonna why green apple. Green apple's got a little bit more tartness, so it adds, it adds more, it just, it's so hard to describe food sometimes. It just adds more to a dish. Like if you have a green apple and a red apple, a red apple just tastes sweeter, but a green apple's got something more to it. That's really hard to identify. You might say it's like brighter. That's a, an adjective I can use to describe it. So with this salsa, we're not, we don't need this. something that's gonna be as sweet as possible. We want a little bit of sweetness, but we also want that, that tang, and it's gonna complement the lemon a little bit. I mean, maybe, you can do this with a red apple, for sure. <laughs> it's not gonna come out bad with a red apple. Or a golden delicious apple. Apple. All right, so our fruity salsa is coming together nicely. Now I'm going to add jalapeno. If you don't like hot pepper, you can add green bell pepper or red bell pepper. Red bell pepper is going to be sweeter. That actually works very well. I'd probably recommend red bell pepper if you're gonna be doing this without a, uh, without jalapenos if you don't want spiciness. You can even add it in with everything. If you have a red bell pepper or you just like red bell pepper, we don't have one on hand, so I'm not gonna be adding that in. I probably would if we did though. I'm gonna take the seeds out this time. We don't really need this to be as hot as possible. <laughs> Sometimes you drop something on the floor, you can just rinse it off again. <laughs> if you think that that is gross, then I'm sorry, but don't, I don't think that everything that's in the grocery store got there perfectly. You can only imagine what all these vegetables went through before they got to the grocery store, who touched them, 
where they were. <clears throat> okay, and this I am going to... I am I'm making the mistake of doing this right now without gloves on, and I have contacts in, so I may be in store for a rough night. This isn't my first time, and it's just a jalapeno, though, so I'll just deal if it happens. But I'm going to do my best to remember to wash my hands extremely well before I remove my contacts. I do not, if, if, if you wear contacts and you're doing this at home, definitely wear gloves. Do not do this without gloves. You will be, you will, you will not be happy. I can... I can pretty much guarantee it, unless you are a masochist and you enjoy that sort of a thing. Brock says five second rule for the dropped jalapeno. Oh yeah, see, Brock, Brock knows. Brock knows what's up, yeah. for sure. <laughs> Helps build your immune system too, keep you nice and healthy. Exactly, that is actually part of our health regimen. <laughs> routine. Sometimes we just throw stuff on the floor just to... Yeah, you just gotta intentionally, you know, just like knock <laughs> on the floor and then throw it in. That's our health secret. Yeah. <laughs> no, we don't do that if we're cooking for people. <laughs> it's just us, maybe, but... The rice, okay, so the rice right now, if you want to take a look, it's actually almost boiled, the water's almost boiled off. So what I'm gonna do is taste this. So here's a way to not burn yourself if you want to impatiently quickly taste something. You can see the steam coming off of this. I just kind of rinse it under a little bit of cold water. <laughs> Brock says in his kitchen he has a five day roll. Yeah. <laughs> I wanna come be in your kitchen, Brock. <laughs> oh, it's like perfect. So. That's it. Um, I turned the heat off, and now I'm going to drain it because there's a little bit of extra water in here. If you are particular about your rice, um, some people are picky about their rice and will think this is terrible, all that. The, really, the easiest way is with a rice cooker then. If you want simplicity, the, the thing about the rice cooker is just it's a little bit more of a... There's more time involved. Just cooked really quickly. With a rice cooker, you have to wait like... There's more like you have to do for it, and I don't have it dialed in yet. It's a process. I'm gonna try these beans too. I'm sure these are not anywhere close to them, but I'm gonna go for it anyways. I think kidney beans are the only ones that are potentially dangerous if you don't cook them enough. Yeah, maybe I should just. <laughs> I'm just gonna cut it first. And... Okay, so it actually did cut. Oh, it's close. We're almost there. Okay, we got our jalapeno, our apple, our onion. Let's add some orange. It was a hot day today. I think that's a good rule for adding more fruit to a salsa. The hot of the day, the more fruit you add to the, the dish. Homer's getting a little rowdy in here. <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> oh wow, it's a red orange. Oh, that's a and fun an orange. surprise. Look at this, it's like a tie-dye orange. This that's is so pretty. This is a miracle, everyone. Are we gonna eat it? I don't know. <laughs> Look at how beautiful this is. I've never seen anything quite like this. Wow. The avocado man really outdid himself this time. <laughs> um, this is phenomenal. I'm gonna taste this and see what this is like. I don't know what I'm, what I just opened up here. <laughs> There's both red and orange. So is a red orange just called a red? Blood orange? It's a blood orange, it's not mm -hmm. just called a red. An orange orange is an orange, but a... Mm. Is it's just called a red, is that what you Yeah, that was the joke, I, I took a little... Oh yeah, sorry, I'm a little <laughs> slow. <laughs> You know that orange, the color, is named after orange, the fruit, though. So, there's that. And maybe this is apple. 
Okay, there's seeds in this. That's a good thing to know and discover before I edit. Mmm. Mm-hmm. It's very orange. Orange-like. Not red. Not red. I mean, blueberries. But they're not even blue. That's the funny thing. They're more purple. Depends on who you're talking to. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like that dress. Mm. Is it a blue dress or a gold dress? It's a couple years ago. We oh. all receive light differently through light. our eyes. Light is so fascinating. I could, I could, yeah, I could do stuff with light. It's so cool. Light is the coolest thing. We are light. Light is so fascinating. I mean, visible light is just a different, different part of the electromagnetic spectrum. Heat, radiation is light. Infrared is light. Just depends on the wavelength and the frequency that whether it's harmful or or good. We emit we emit infrared radiation. We reflect light. If you want a good fun thing to look up tonight after this make your mind uh just give your mind a little fun looking up the double slit experiment on youtube and that that'll blow your mind if you're not familiar with it maybe it blew, it, i thought it was cool um <laughs> what else are we gonna add to this anyone have suggestions of what we should add to this we have carrot. over there carrot and I'm olive I don't think olive's gonna go in this. I love carrot. Yeah, yeah, I think carrot belongs, but I'm just gonna add one carrot. On one of our first times Bo and I hung out, I ate a carrot. So that, that sounds kind of normal. <laughs> <laughs> that actually sounds not that unnormal, but the thing was, when we went out, we were going somewhere. We were on our way to a, an event and we were going past Sprouts, which is a grocery store, and Sprouts has a deli where they have some fresh sandwiches. Oh, so here's a fun technique. I'm gonna interrupt my story. Sometimes carrots are tough to clean. They have like these little black spots. So I just take a knife instead of a vegetable peeler and just scrape the carrot. And that takes care of all that weird black stuff that may or may not be dirt. Takes carrot it. It takes carrot, carrot of it. <laughs> okay. So, back to the story. <laughs> so yeah, we go to Sprouts, which has his deli. I get in line for the deli, Autumn walks off, and we meet back up. I've got my little deli sandwich, and Autumn comes back, and, like this was our lunch. Autumn comes back with a cucumber and a carrot. <laughs> That's it, just raw, like a whole cucumber and a whole carrot, like one in each hand. <laughs> and I was like, that's your lunch. And sure enough, that's what she ate. We got to the event, we packed our, our lunches in our bags, biked to the event we were going to, and then I, you know, took out my, my sandwich to eat it, and she just took a chunk out of her cucumber <laughs> and carrot. <laughs> All right, so let's see here. Oh, you know what? I realized I just kind of chopped this carrot because I was mindful, mindlessly telling a story. It's, fun, it's funny how you really can't multitask. Mm. What I probably would have preferred to have done going, looking back in hindsight, is shredded the carrot on a shredder, like a, like a Parmesan cheese shredder. But this is fine too. <laughs> we can make this work. All right, that looks good. Now we're just gonna add a little bit more salt, I think. Mm. It's 
Smells really good. Smells super fresh. Yeah. I'm gonna add some cracked black pepper. Always buy the 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 the, the, the balls, the peppercorns, whole whole peppercorns, because the ground peppercorn lose their their pungency once they're ground. Mm. So fresh ground always is the freshest tasting. You can also refill it with bulk for significantly cheaper than buying a whole new grinder and container. Mm. Yeah, Autumn's been the grocery shopping expert here. All right, let's see what this tastes like. Mmm. I'm gonna add this other orange. Because I just want a little bit more of it. That first one really didn't add that much. Maybe I'll add another carrot too. Is there anything you definitely wouldn't add to this? Let's say someone's wanting to throw some random stuff in their little fruit salad they have at home. Is there anything that just doesn't go with these things? What doesn't go? I mean, there's so many things that wouldn't, wouldn't go, that I wouldn't recommend. Um, yeah, it's tough because you, you, you want to add things that are going to work together and not clash too much. Like, I would never add tomatoes to this. Mm -hmm. um, tomatoes are kind of their own thing. They can have a lot of flavor on their own sometimes. Um, what about celery, avocado, cucumber? Those both, avocado would go fantastic in this. Um, would olives go? Uh, I could see black olives going. I think green olives have too much other flavor going on. Mm -hmm. Kalamatas too, they, I think they're too distracting. Um, like foods that have their own overwhelming flavor can be distracting to something like this. Um. <laughs> oh, you gotta go. We always make fishing part of this. Sometimes you gotta fish for a seed. I okay, said so those outdoors people, anyone that likes the outdoors channels, probably having a ball watching this. Going oh, fishing. All right, let's try some of this now. Your mom said lemon or orange zest. Mmm, mm-hmm. Oh, the zest part, I agree. Zest would go great. Zest adds more of the flavor without as much of the acidity, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is like really good, mm. just as it is. I'm gonna feed some to my camera girl, just to. Mm. Mm -hmm. Check on the beans. Oh, that's delicious. Super refreshing. All right, beans, let's see how you're doing. They kind of look like pinto beans now. Mine's colorful. Acid also preserves color. I didn't add any acid to this. Mm-hmm, perfect. They're a little firm. They're not like a total mush when you bite down, but they're definitely tender on the inside. This is a poorly designed pot because it's got metal handles mm. that are in direct path of the flame that comes up from underneath. The stove might be a poor design as well. Yeah, we've talked about the stove um, design <laughs> because the oven vents onto the handles of the things on the stove. So if you have the oven on while you are cooking from the stove top, 
Uh, ow. You have to be careful. Just always be careful during cooking. Okay. I just drained our beans. And I'm not gonna, I'm gonna do more. Just having boiled beans is boring. They really just, plumped up. Yeah, they, they plump up a bit. They got, they get, they get, they grow up. <laughs> yeah, babe. All right, last two things that we're gonna do is, it's just chaos in here. The more the things happen, the more chaotic it gets. I'm gonna turn this big pan on. I'm gonna cook some kale. Cook some kale. I don't know if I wanna do an onion with the kale. So we got onion in there. Yeah. Let's do, I'm gonna make some kale chips on the stove top. Cause that's fun. I love crispy kale. So to make crispy kale, you wash your kale, and you need to make sure you do not overcrowd the pan. If you try to make a bunch of crispy kale at once, you, you can't, it's just gonna get mushy. So we're gonna add a little bit of oil in the pan. We're gonna heat it up. I talked about this, uh, so as I, the videos, you guys see everything live, I'm figuring stuff out. At the end, I usually take the video, or the recipes that were in the video, and then post that onto the website with more explanations. So a lot of the things that I don't know here that I like prompt, or if you ask a question, I'll try and answer in the actual recipe. So in the past, like, why am I adding oil to the pan? Um, or why am I heating, waiting for the pan to heat up with oil in it? And there, you actually don't have to do it with certain pans, but with cast iron pans, you want the oil to first get hot before you add your whatever you're adding to it because it's going to help prevent the food from sticking to the bottom. There's other things out there that say like, the food's gonna absorb more oil or get like soggy, and that's, I don't think that's actually true. Um, the best, the best places to go for cooking science information are going to be either a Cook's Illustrated uh, website, Cook's Illustrated, America's Test Kitchen, those are like the same company, I think, the Food Lab, and then there's a book, or anything Alton Brown writes, or the, the book on food and cooking that I reference sometimes. Otherwise, there's a lot of stuff people will just say that isn't true, like searing meat seals in, seal, seals in the juices, it's not true. This is a vegan cooking show, we don't, we don't, we're not gonna talk about that, but. <laughs> Anyways, there's a reason for everything we do in cooking, otherwise why are we going to do it? That's why I like hack the rice, that's good enough. I do still heat the oil in the pan though, before I add stuff to it, because if I don't do that, the stuff gets stuck to the bottom of the pan. I am really, really, I need to work on my rambling, because I ramble a lot. It's endearing. It's endearing. I'm still here. You're <laughs> Thank goodness. All right. Here we go. Shredding up some kale. Some red kale or purple kale. And it tastes pretty similar to regular kale. I think you can pretty much substitute it in every instance. Try and get, make sure it's dried off decently well. You can use a knife. I just shred right above the pan. You don't use too many kitchen gadgets, Bo. You don't, I think that's great for people wanting to cook. You just show that you can use your hands as almost a tool to do anything. Yeah, you don't need that many special tools in cooking. I mean, even just you squeezing the lemon, you know, some people think you need a ju like a lemon juicer yeah, thing there's or, you know. So many random cooking things that you actually don't need. Um, there are a few things that are 
There are some specialty things that actually are really essential. For example, an ice cream machine. Mm. Like, it's really hard to, and annoying to make ice cream without that. Food processor, that's something else that it's really hard to... I had a mortar and pestle, and it is really hard to grind things up with a mortar and pestle. Um, so, certain tools definitely have their place. I'm going to use, again, I try, try and use wood on cast iron so you don't scratch the bottom. I sometimes don't, but it's best if you really care about your stuff to do that. You can see the kale's already starting to get brown. See that crispiness right there? Some golden brown kale, stove top kale chips. What's going on here? Last thing I'm gonna do is the beans. And a nice breeze that just came through here. Mm. Cast iron, maybe I'll do one cast iron. Yeah, I'll do one cast iron pan. Okay. Cast iron, the other fun thing, you never have to like really wash it. Um, just wipe it out the whole time. Sometimes I rinse it if there's really stuff stuck on it. But I use these like all day, every day, and there's, you can see there's like a nice reflective layer on there of the non-stick coating. Kind of keeping an eye on this. I've lowered the heat a little bit more to like a, a medium, slightly above medium. And again, I'm looking for the kale to just get crispy. And this is probably the max amount of kale you'd want in the pan. It's just enough to coat the bottom of it. olive oil for everything. I keep everything below the smoke point of olive oil. Um, you should do that for pretty much every cooking oil. Uh, but olive oil is, I think it's part of the most, the, I think the most, the longest, pe the people with the longest lives, like seemingly healthiest people in the world but are Mediterranean, I think. And like olive oil is just a huge part of their diet. That's the oil of choice. So I feel like the empirical data <laughs> is better than the experimental data. So if somebody's doing something that works, let's let's copy it. I love olives. Mm, me too. They're not some seeds. I've been I've been doing less seeds and I've actually been doing no seeds and nuts. I cut those out recently. Been having some some issues that I believe are related to the consumption of those. So, and it's been working. Um, so that's a big part for a lot of vegans of their protein consumption is seeds and nuts. Um, so for me, it's, I'm still eating eggs, so I'm not totally vegan. <laughs> and I think that is just important for me to keep, keep that in my diet. When was the last time you had meat, Bo? Last time I had meat was sometime in early March, actually. It's been that long. I wondered if you were going to have tacos with your buddies the other day. I did have tacos. Or meat tacos, excuse me. I thought about it, um, but there, there were two vegan tacos. No, vegetarian tacos on the menu. I did have cheese. I got a chili. I just didn't want to make things difficult for the... For the the, the cashier, so I got a, um, I just got the two vegan, the two vegetarian ones, one of them was a chili relleno, it's like a fried chili, which I didn't realize it's basically just a, a mozzarella stick, 
with a little bit of pepper in it. I mean, it was delicious, but it was too much cheese. Like, I couldn't eat the whole cheese. Mm -hmm. Like, I was like, there's no way I'm eating this much cheese. Okay, so I just added some sliced garlic to this. And then let that get a little golden brown. Now I'm going to add some beans. I like cooking the beans twice, um, as in I boil them first to get them prepped. This is what I would actually do for meat too when I was cooking a lot of meat. I would do meat in a slow cooker so that it got really tender, mm -hmm. and then I would fry it in some oil or some fat in a pan, mm -hmm. and it would be like this super good, crispy, yet but like super tender meat. It was the best way to cook meat. And I try and do the same thing with beans. So. You boil them just because that's just easy. You can boil a bunch of them. I'm going to turn the heat off on this because this is pretty much done. They're really crispy now. They'll dry out a little bit more as they're sitting in here. Um, but browning, so the key thing, a, a big component to making vegan food taste good is adding in the savory, the savory elements that's often missing, missing and provided by meat. Um, so to get more savory flavor, you want to add these things that uh, you want to add more umami, which you can do through browning, browning uh, foods, and through adding little things like our glutamates. I forgot to mention, sometimes you're like looking on a bag of chips and you see things. You might see yeast extract, that's for savoriness. Uh, MSG, savoriness. Uh, sodium guanulate, uh, savoriness. And that is the thing that, that comes from like mushrooms. They're, I, uh, they're, they provide that amino acid. I think it's an amino acid, whatever it is. I just add a little bit of soy sauce to this for the umami element, I'm going to add a little bit of nutritional yeast, again for more umami, more savoriness. Make this taste meaty, but not reminiscent of meat, not actually meat flavored. Mm. Smells good. Yeah. What else to add to this? I'm, I think I'm gonna add a little bit of cumin and oregano. So we're taking, I think katsuki beans are normally like Japanese. They're like usually used in Japanese food. And we're gonna make them a little bit more like a Mexican tasting dish. We got that salsa I want this to go with. So this is cumin, I hope. Yeah, it's cumin. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes. Sometimes you mess, mess up the wrong thing. The worst is mistaking something for cinnamon, or mistaking cinnamon for something. This is oregano. Cumin and oregano are like some of my favorite spices to add. You can add spices to the cooking oil right before you, I didn't do it in this case, but right before you add whatever it is that you're cooking. Adding it to the oil beforehand will like bloom the spices and make them bl bloom. It's a technical term. It basically makes them like you smell it and it, like makes a slightly deeper flavor. Deeper flavor. See, I don't even know. I feel like such a like. What am I saying sometimes? It's great. But deeper flavor. Like, what does that even mean? Oh, like look at the scale. Like, Words are just arrows. Words are arrows. That is very true. Mm. All right. I think that's it. I think we're done here. Mm. We've got a mess, but now we got to do the uh, the tasting. The plating. Mm-hmm. So I'll do it like last time. I make up a little plate for our camera girl and she can, <laughs> I'll, I'll pass it over to her.
But you have to try it first, though. I, I guess I, yeah, I do have to try it first. Because I have to make sure it's okay. Always try your food before you serve it. So, again, here we go. We're building. We got our carb on the base. You can make even like a little pool. You can put a little like divot mm. there. So you can put all your little Azuki swimmers in the pool. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> all right, next we've got our kale, which is, oh, I have to add a little bit of salt to the kale. I mean, just, hang on, can you hear this? That's what you want the kale to sound like. It probably could have gone a little bit more, but we're already almost, we're basically done, so I'm just gonna leave it at this. Sprinkle a little bit of salt. Just. It's so good. You, have, you can obviously use a utensil for serving this. You don't need to use your fingers. Taste very informally. There. Make me a proper cook, toast. And then we have our salsa. And I put the salsa off to the side. You always gotta do your sauces off to the side. I guess it's kind of technically a sauce. Okay. Now, oh, it smells so good. Mm. There's so many good smells going in this kitchen right now. Yeah. You might need a little bit of salt because I didn't salt the beans. Oh no, I did salt the beans with soy sauce. I don't use the low sodium soy sauce. I just use the real, real deal. Thank you, Brock. It does look really good. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I'm saying thank you. Bo did it. <laughs> you actually did it all. This is our. This is the big reveal. Autumn has actually been cooking the entire time. <laughs> Welcome to Cat Chef Kitchen Magic Show. <laughs> I don't think I've ever had these beans before. Even more exciting. It's good? Mm -hmm. Good. Mm. Ooh, I love the crispy with the fresh, with the warm. She approves. I totally approve. I love this little salad happening. Yeah, it's delicious. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So we have our meal tonight. I think the way I've been doing this now for the recipes, I'll probably just break things up separately um and just do individual because you don't have to have this meal by itself but it's fun to learn to cook kale this way it's fun to learn this method of cooking beans it's fun to learn to cook rice this like everything is it's the individual pieces of all this that i want to emphasize and like you can combine this with whatever, whatever you want you could do the rice with maybe pinto beans and I guess you could do kale here too, like again. I haven't done any other chips. Kale just works really well for the um, leafy chips. And then this is really good too. And I'll post that recipe. Mm. I don't need to change anything there. Yeah. So thank you everyone for watching. Thanks for being entertained by us and our dinosaurs. Who have dinosaurs here? And is there anything else? Does anyone have any questions now that class is over? Oh, class! Class! <laughs> I realize I didn't give it, I should give an opportunity at the end mm. if there's any, like... I like that. Like, a question and answer section. That's great. And we do have a few listeners going right now, so... Yeah. If anyone wants to communicate with Bo, I will help share. Mm. Now, are you going to add anything else to that? Are you going to add nutritional yeast on top of it? Hemp seeds, more soy sauce? Is it perfect? I think it's pretty perfect. I might take a little tiny bit of salt. 
and add that. Maybe soy sauce, but I'll probably just go to the table with salt and just add a little bit when I think it needs it. But for the most part, this is kind of exactly where I'd want it to be. Mm. Yeah, it doesn't taste like it's like missing anything. It tastes wholesome. Mm -hmm. No one's saying right. anything yet, so, so I guess no one has any questions. It. So I guess thank you all for watching. Happy cooking and eating, and see you all next week. Or maybe we'll do the vegan breakfast thing Ooh, yes. sometime this this week. Yes, we'll have to let Brock know when we do the vegan breakfast. Oh wait, banana surprise. Oh. Just have to show a quick glimpse of the banana surprise. Bo wants to share a delicious dirt, or dirt. Dirt. Dessert. <laughs> I don't know why dirt came out of my mouth. This is Autumn's favorite dessert when she was growing up. Your mom said it looks delicious and wishes she was here. This Look is how good surprise. this is. So this is normally graham cracker crust. So the original recipe is graham cracker crust crust, chocolate pudding, sliced bananas, vanilla pudding, and then Cool Whip. And a lot of that is not vegan. <laughs> All of it. So, <laughs> what we did, we make a graham cracker crust with coconut oil. Uh, the chocolate pudding is actually mashed avocado and cocoa powder with maple syrup. The vanilla pudding is, um, Potatoes, vanilla extract, coconut cream, and maple syrup. Oh yeah, there's also a cream cheese layer that's supposed to be in the original. The cream cheese layer is potatoes, vinegar, nutritional yeast, maple syrup, and salt. <laughs> and we added some coconut flakes on the top this time, which I probably wouldn't do again, mm. but it was just a fun little addition. It's really good with it. She says it's good. I think it's kind of a weird texture, but... It's texture, but it's still good. But I think you should share that it takes a day or two to... Yes, you need to prep a day. And I, I filmed this in a solo session the other night, so I'll try and post that soon as well, because this is just... This was a lo this is a longer one. This is more of a project. But it's, it's fun to know the basic components. It's nice to know how to make chocolate pudding with avocado and vanilla pudding with coconut and potato. So it's really tasty. It sounds gross, but we need a, to do a dessert show. Yeah, we're gonna do a dessert one too. We've got a lot of baked goods we've been working on. So, all right, everyone, thank you for watching, and have a great night. <laughs>